Now let's talk about cache coherence in a distributed shared memory machine. The first approach we'll consider is the full bit vector approach. That means for each block of memory, if we have a K processor system, there is a K bit bit vector that records which of the K caches that block is present in. And you can see the processors here, the caches here, and here is the bit vector. There's a K bit vector that tells you which cache holds a copy of this block. Associated with the block, there's also a dirty bit that tells whether the block has been modified since it was read from memory. Each cache line has a state, and its state is represented in essentially the same way as in bus-based designs. If there's an MSI protocol in use, then that state for any particular cache line will be MSRI. If it's a messy protocol, well then we have a choice of four different states, M, E, S, and I. Let's consider how the bit vector and the dirty bit are manipulated on memory transactions. First of all, on a read by processor I, the home node makes the following changes. If the dirty bit in memory is zero, then it simply supplies the data to the requesting cache and sets that cache's presence bit to one, recording that that block is present in the cache of processor I. However, if the dirty bit is one, well then some other cache has a modified copy of the block, so it sends an intervention to the owner. And remember, an intervention causes the cache to change state from M to S, it then updates the home node, which means that the data is flushed to memory at the home. The dirty bit is now set to zero because the main memory is now up to date. The presence bit for cache I is set to one, just like it was in the case of the dirty bit being equal to zero, and data is again supplied to node I. Now let's consider a write transaction. I'm going to tell you some of the changes to take place and the exercises will ask you to fill in the rest of the changes. If the dirty bit is zero, well then something needs to be done. The dirty bit is then set to one and the presence bit for cache I is set to one and data is supplied to node I. On the other hand, if the dirty bit was one, something needs to happen. The presence bit of the owner is set to zero, that's the former owner actually. The presence bit of I, the requesting cache, is set to one, and data is supplied to the requesting cache I. Now, see if you can fill in the blanks in the right transaction. If a block is dirty in node I, and that block needs to be replaced, then data is written back to memory, and the directory at the home node is updated to turn off the dirty bit, and also the presence bit of I because the data is no longer present in cache I. If it's a shared block that's replaced, the directory may or may not be updated. If it is, well then, uh, the directory will be up to date. But if it's not, the directory will still indicate that this cache block is present in cache I. And then if it's necessary to invalidate that block in all the caches that share it, then an unnecessary invalidation may be sent to the node. But it won't harm anything because it just says invalidate a block that's no longer in the cache. The reason that we have the directory is that we need some way to keep track of which nodes have copies of a block because if we need to make a change like an intervention or an invalidation, we can send messages directly to those nodes and that's important because we have no way to broadcast like we would if we had a bus. Now directories would not be efficient if most of the data was shared by most of the nodes in the system. The reason for that is that you'd have to send messages to a whole lot of nodes when a change was made and that would be almost as bad as broadcast. But the number of valid copies of most blocks is going to be very small and the reason for that is that main memory is so much bigger than the caches that, that blocks can only be held in a few of the caches. There's just not room to have many blocks in a lot of caches. So most of the time, you'll only need to invalidate one or two copies of the block. 